Good morning, Europe and rest of the world, because it's an ungodly hour for the rest of you. And uh, we're starting with the Class uh, G2 Esports Class Legends Tournament with me, Subtle, today. The same as yesterday. How are you doing, man? Yeah, I'm doing good. I don't know about ungodly hour for the rest of the world. It's an ungodly hour for me. I, I'm, all, <laughs> I'm all about that game of life, dude. I don't want to be getting up at 8.30 a.m. to cast tournaments. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be here. We had a great day yesterday. I'm looking forward to more of the same today. And we've got a pretty stacked looking top eight, I think. Well, we started with a high, on a high note yesterday with Zetvelot versus Stansivka. What that was, I think that was the highlight of the day. That was the best match that we had. Most interesting match. Best um, possible, interesting, and, and, and like best possible complex situations in the matches, right? And today we'll have Zetalot against Tice in the first match, so it will be quite a different matchup. It will be not between control, um, control decks, but at the same time, uh, Tice is known for playing almost flawlessly every single game. He's also on um, on the back on of winning um, Curse Trials, yes. so he was re he is really looking for that win to have two back to back wins, uh, to one tournament in a row. I won tournaments in a row, and Seth a lot. I think he's one of the players that needs a breakout performance since he started playing tournaments now, right? Because he was mostly focusing on streaming for the past, so let's say, 12 months, right? Yep. So now he's starting to play in tournaments, and I'm sure that he wants that breakout performance. But apart from that, uh, we have also other players in the tournament, and after the first match is Zetalot vs. Tice, that will be Ecop vs. Crane, then Lifecoat vs. AKA Wonder, Super JJ vs. Um, Gara. Mm -hmm. Yes, Super yeah. JJ vs. Gara. And um, after that, because that will be the, uh, all of the quarterfinals, we'll switch to the semifinals, and then to the grand finals, so seven matches today. So look, what can you tell me about the rules for the new viewers? Sure. So this is a completely different tournament format from anything you will have seen before. It's not just a regular Hearthstone tournament. It's not even a standard Hearthstone tournament. This is a single class Hearthstone tournament. Now, what that means is that each player has to pick one individual class that they build their decks from. They then build two decks that they bring to the tournament and you play a best of five format using your two decks. Now you may be saying, how do you play best of five with only two decks? That doesn't make any sense. Um, <laughs> Basically, there is no deck elimination, so whether you win with a deck, lose with a deck, it doesn't matter. That deck is not eliminated, so the winner of each individual game has to stay on their same deck, but the loser is allowed to re the same deck again or change to their alternate deck. Um, the idea of this is that um, basically we're encouraging people to um, you know, tech out their decks in different ways, to bring two different archetypes to try and cover the whole meta. And then we want to give them the complete freedom to be able to play either of those decks in any situation. Um, nice to yeah. yeah, thank you. Uh, and <laughs> it's it's created a, a lot of interesting... We kind of saw both sides of the of the coin yesterday, I think. Exactly. Uh, we, we saw um, people bringing two wildly different archetypes. Like Primarily the Warlock players were bringing a Zoo and then a Control Warlock deck. Mm -hmm. um, we saw, for example, Oskaka had a Freeze Mage and a Tempo Mage as well. But then we've also seen the side where it's kind of like the the class specialists have brought like one deck that they're really comfortable with and teched it in two different ways. And I'm yep. looking at say Zetalot just brought control priest, one control priest like full of light bombs and entombs, and then another control priest that had more minion focus with like holy champions and stuff like that. Um, so there's a there's a bunch of different ways that you can go at this the meta that this tournament creates, and I think that's what makes it really interesting for me. Yep. Um... That's a um, pretty nice summary, I would say, because I wanted to touch the same topic. But uh, like, when I, uh, if I would like to be ob objective, and I always try to be objective, I would have to say that there's like a difference between the matches that we saw today between being them super interesting and somewhat boring, right? right? Because people, I think, some players didn't prepare correctly for the format, mm -hmm. and. The, they didn't adjust the decks to the way they can switch around, right? right? Because I think you should have an advantage of almost always switching around, right? Unless there's a special tech in your deck that right. single-handedly uh, can um, switch the the the, the, um, the matchup persons, per, uh, percentages. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. And so an example, an example that was the case with Gara. We were like bashing him for few minutes for not switching the zoo against face hunter yeah. and then in the last two games there was Kazan mystic mm -hmm. 
that single-handedly won the game, and that was the only reason why he was sticking to that zoo deck for exactly five games. Yep. Yeah, it makes a, a ton of sense. Like you said, we were thought it was really bizarre. It's like, you know, what what other warlock deck would Gara have that isn't at least more favored against Face Hunter than Zoo? Mm -hmm. uh, but then we saw, you know, the Kezen Mystic that he just didn't draw in the first few games coming out and uh Kezen Mystic is definitely a, an option that a few players have gone for. We saw Ecop was carrying it in his uh, Reno lock as well. Exactly. Um, yeah. And it, ma it makes a lot of sense when you think about it because Mage is definitely one of the potentially strong classes in this format. You know, we saw Oskaka's strategy of Freeze Mage plus an aggressive Mage. Um, so Kezen Mystic definitely, of course, the, the natural predator of Freeze Mage. Mm -hmm. So it makes it makes a lot of sense to, to go down that line. Um, probably wasn't teched in targeting Hunters. Um, but, oh, anyway, it looks like we've... Uh, We've waffled on far too long, Lothar, and we are already... Oh, we'll be switching to the game in We're a few seconds, already yeah. ready to start the first game, and in case you uh, haven't figured it out yet, Zetalot is in fact bringing Priest. No great surprises there. And his opponent, Tice, will be on the Druid. We saw, I believe, only Aggro Druid from Tice in the yeah. last round, but we would suspect that his other deck is just a standard midrange. I would guess so. Like, the strategy of bringing the Aggro Druid yesterday against Oskaka worked perfectly. Because Oskaka was playing Mage. So... Uh, okay, he was playing Kalento. Uh, sorry, against Kalento. Because yeah. Kalento was playing... Warlock. Warlock, yes. Yeah. So the aggro, aggro Druid was a perfect choice anyway. Yeah. Um, but uh, changing the top about uh, I wanted to change the topic because this time Zell has his camera on. It's nice. Hey! <laughs> and uh, looking at Tice's opening here, Innovate Shade of Naxxramas into Wild Growth is more or less the dream when you're going first as a druid. That is one of the very best openings that you can mm -hmm. have. It kind of puts a problem for Zetalot uh, on the table because the death lord, if it will be played, at some point it will be just one-shotted by the um, Shade of Naxxramas. And that's a huge problem because you don't want to have... Oh my god. You don't want to have um, Druid getting three minions. Because in the... Uh, I would say worst case scenario, mm -hmm. it won't be a scenario, but uh, it will be a Keeper, right? Yeah. That's the worst minion. Apart from Darkness's Aspirant. Um, and that's basically it. Otherwise, yeah. it will be a 4-4, four, four, a 5-5... Five, five, a 7-7 seven, seven minion, and right. you might have a problem. Yeah, absolutely. And it looks like Zellot here is going with the more minion-focused deck up first against Druid. Has the extra Holy Champions and stuff mm -hmm. in it, which makes a lot of sense. You definitely want to be able to get some minions on board and, and fight for the board, honestly. Things like uh, Light Bomb and Holy Nova aren't particularly effective against Druid. You know, if you look at the shape of their minions, you know, four six Druid of the Claw, Pilot Shredder has the Death Rattle, etc. So yeah. Light Bomb, Light Bomb is very rarely perfect against a Druid. So it's fight, good against fight, Shade of Nexramus, though. It is definitely good against Shade, though. Yeah, but it's um, far away from the turn when Light Bomb will be played. And I, I was kind of thinking about curving out with the sh second Shade for Living Roots, because the value of Living Roots against Zetalot's decks in general are kind of sad, right? Those die to Pyromancers, to Holy Novas, to Light Bombs, so you most likely will not use it as a 1-1, one -one, and you will use it as, as a projectile. So right. why wouldn't you go for the um, for another minion on board and the Living Roots, right? If you want to attack anyway, to put more pressure on board. Yeah. Definitely a consideration. Ty's probably just considering that um, due to his his innovate wild growth start, he was very very low on cards, and he wanted to perhaps double his options to get a strong play for the next turn. Mm -hmm. uh, it turns out he would have just naturally drawn Druid of the Claw anyway, but obviously he doesn't know that. And of course, Druid of the Claw could have just easily have been that next card, which was Savage Raw. So by using the Wrath to cycle, he he increases his chances of uh, hitting strong plays for the future. Mm -hmm. And now um, Ty's of course knows there's a coin in uh, Zetal's opening hand um, that wasn't used, so he's free to kill that um, to kill that Death Lord and still be kind of safe from the Holy Nova that can be played on 10-4, because it doesn't deal free damage, it only deals two, so it kills one minion, so it balances out, it balances it out with the free minion from the Death Lord. And in this case, Pile to Shredder, although it's in bad positioning because of the random drop, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's still a very frustrating minion to deal with for for priest. Yeah, I was just gonna say, Death Lord confirmed bad Hearthstone player. Doesn't know where to put <laughs> shredders. <laughs> yeah. Um, Norsha Cleric coming down here. Is he just gonna? He's gonna heal it. He's gonna heal. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say. 
feels desperate enough to heal an opponent's minion here just to pick up a card from the cleric really trying to dig through to that light bomb that's probably still in the deck i'm not sure if we did see light bomb at this point mm -hmm. we did we did see multiple light bombs but that was in the other deck not in this right. one yeah and i'm just i was just wondering why did he heal the uh the druid of the claw if it dies to holy nova mm. Because this way you tell you're telling your opponent I don't have a Holy Nova, right? Yeah, it's a very good point. Um, wonder if Tice will use that information here. He, he has the potential of developing the Shade, which of course would be scary to play down into a potential Holy Nova, but he might feel comfortable here now, just saying, "Oh, he probably doesn't have it," and just going for it. But looks like he's going to go all out aggro here. Savage Roar on this board yep. does an enormous amount of damage. It's eight damage for three mana, so yep. <laughs> better effect. Uh, than Fireball Mage. Oh wow, he's actually one damage off lethal. Yeah. <laughs> the Living Roots could have done an additional two, taking the Priest all the way down to one, but smart to hold on to it for now. He has plenty of mana available to him next turn. Uh, he can choose to, to finish the game if he needs to, or if there's some miracle answer from Zetalot here, he can uh, just play the Dr. Boom on curve. So. It is a huge problem for Zetalot. I don't see a way out for him. Yeah, I was going to say, I think any anything here starts with Wild Pyromancer, and he's going to dig through his deck, try and draw as many answers as he can, but this already locks up a lot of his mana. Mm -hmm. uh, two mana spent, uses the coin to well, get one of his mana back, so he can't cast Light Bomb anymore, but he has picked up a ton of spells here. There's he two might flesh be able to make something happen, yeah. I wasn't taking those into account in this deck, right? Because he was... Right. Oh, no, wait, he was playing two fleshers in both of them. Yes. I think maybe this deck doesn't have the additional uh, Light of the Naru that we saw in the, the really yeah. controly deck. That's probably the possible change, but all of these spells are definitely going to help him get some work done here. Flash Heal. Flash oh. Heal will deal one additional damage, but uh, then a second Flash Heal will kill two Druid minions. That's actually a way to survive. Wow. wow. <laughs> um, um, wow. That was amazing, to be honest. Yeah. It was. And Dr. Boom is going to come down here, and now he has that. Now, due to that intense cycle on the previous turn, he actually has access to the light bomb. So, this board is just going to go away straight away. Unless the Boom Bots do eight or at least seven here, he's going to be able to survive another turn. That's five. Yeah. It's, um, it's less than average, but it's still a huge problem. Snake Eyes would have been perfect for, yeah. for uh, Zetalot because he, he had spent the whole turn just to kill the board and didn't develop anything so he will be in the same position next turn he needs to kill the board to have anything uh, any chances to to survive and then put the, the of course perfect scenario would be to put anything on board from his own side so it, it he will take um he will have a tempo advantage but absolutely oh, and there's any choice here yeah. short cleric that's the only choice Yep, and Tomb has to come down. It's the only thing that's going to prevent lethal. And I don't know if there are any taunt minions in this deck from Zetalot outside of the Death Lords. And Drew the Claw is just going to make it all a formality. He comes down charging. This is why uh, the, I was just about to make the point about the taunts. It's all well and good clearing the board every turn, but if he doesn't pick up like a Sludge Belcher or a second Death Lord, then mm -hmm. anything like Drew to the Claw, uh, Force of Nature, etc., was just going to end the game. It's exactly what we saw. Drew to the Claw comes out, takes game one for Tice. Well, that was an interesting game, I would say, because I was already, like, saying that Zettel lost the game, yeah. and somehow he turned it around with the insane cycle from um, from the combo py Pyromancer and multiple spells alongside uh, the Northrad Cleric. Of course, without the double flash heal, he would have been dead after the bombs, because right. he, he was at exactly 5 HP after yep. the bombs, so with this, without the second flash heal, uh, he wouldn't be able to survive, but in general, that was a really well played by Zedalot. It was. It was great recognition not only of like the the Pyromancer turn in itself, but also that he needed to start the turn quickly. You saw him immediately yeah. make the play with the cleric, the Pyromancer, the coin, circle mm -hmm, healing, mm -hmm. etc. Very much like a, a miracle rogue turn where. You know, normally the you right strategy. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Norm normally the right strategy in Hearthstone is like sit and work out what your whole turn is going to be before you start doing anything. When you draw that many cards in one turn, you have no idea what your turn is going to be. So you just need to start and just be able to have enough time to react to the rest of your turn. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's a very good point. I still remember the horror stories of players like 
you know, still watching the animations till today <laughs> of Miracle Rogue when they started to turn to late. So I don't think Zettel wait, Zettel switched the deck, I think. Because now he's playing Justicar, and I'm almost sure that he didn't he wasn't playing uh Justicar in the version with Holy Champions. Interesting. Uh, maybe we can get confirmation from our admins on that, but mm -hmm. for now we'll just wait and see how it develops. Living Roots on turn one from Tice, no answer from Zetalot. And he has a Twilight Drake, I mean the priest version of Twilight Drake, right? In form of Injun Blade Master and yeah. Circle of Healing. Yep. Same and... deck for Zetalot. Okay. So he plays Jessica in both versions. Yeah, it's interesting. I know that uh, Zetalot is, is definitely a really big fan of, of Jessica True Heart and Priest, so no great surprise to me that he's playing it in both versions. Mm -hmm. um, but it seems like these decks are actually a little bit more similar than we thought, because there is in fact double Light Bomb in this minion-focused version as well. There's Justica in both versions. Um, so I think the only differences we've seen so far is that this deck has Thought Steel in it, as well as uh, at least one Holy Champion. I think it was even two. I mean, uh, one was played, and I think we saw one during the cycles, like, you know, the, the draw cycles. Okay. That's about it. But uh -huh. that's the first Shadow War death we have ever seen from Zettel now, during the seven games. Interesting. Yeah, he is going to play the trading game with this Injured Blade Master, recognizes that even though he has a really dominant board, he is playing the control deck in this situation. Mm -hmm. um, but that Shadow of Death to deal with the Innovate Dr. Boom was huge, especially since he can now follow up with a second Blade Master Circle of Healing if he would like to. Um, but there may be some consideration from his part of just playing Blade Master and healing it manually with the Hero Power and saving that Circle of Healing for the Orc and I combo. Yep. I really like how Tice is using the Savage Roar without um, the Force of Nature because he could recognize the value of the damage immediately by having just the board. Because it's like you use your minions as the removal, multiple m removals, and oh, that's quite unlucky. Double ones from the bombs. Mm. But it's still a lot of damage when you think about it. For free mana, he got 8 damage plus. Oh, wow, that's nice. Okay, so all three of these options, I think, are viable. We'll see which ones that a lot chooses to go he for. He goes He's for just... the most convenient one, yeah. right? Yeah, most mana efficient, and also now he just has a, a ton of tempo plays available to him with that organized Soul Priest in combination with the Hero Power, or the Flash Heal, or the Circle of Healing, whatever's appropriate to the situation. Organized Soul Priest Flash Heal on an Ancient of Lore is one of the, like, swingiest turns you can get in this matchup, and... Zellot, after drawing fairly poorly in the in the previous game, we we commented yesterday that he was very unlucky with his uh, Death Lord timings. He wasn't really mm -hmm, getting mm -hmm. them early against the aggro decks, but he was getting them early against the like the mid range decks that can beat them up very quickly. And um, we saw he again he drew Death Lord and got punished for it early in the first game. But this time he's just had those Blade Master circle appealings, which are exactly what you want in this matchup. Wow. Second Savage Roar immediately dropped just to deal with the second Injured Blade Master. So, by Hero Power Ring, instead of using Circle of Healing or Flash Heal, oh my god, uh, meant for Ties to like push Ties to use a removal instead of developing the board. I, I think actually that might have been the reason why he was playing it this way and not playing it safe just to have the Injured Blade, Blade Master still on board because he has options by developing further turns, right? He has the Alcani, he has the... Um, he has the Justicar to Hunt, which is just a perfect turn, look at that. Yep. One mana, five damage to the minion. That's like a kill command without a beast. I mean, okay, the Alcani Alken is a beast in this scenario and uh, it deals five damage. And now you have, like, the, the Alcani has a big red dot on its forehead because if you if you are not able to deal with that minion it deals four damage to every single drop you will be playing on board so it has to be killed first yep agreed and Tice is going to go for the full removal turn here using up pretty much all his resources swipe keeper of the grove and the hero power just to take back the board and this is going to work out pretty well for him because we, as we see right now that a lot has nothing else proactive left to do with his hand but with both Savage Roars gone, Zellot will feel like he has time here, and he could also just draw Doctor Boom, which is a pretty good card when you're out of minions. Yeah, and then when you think about it, it can be for 8 mana and still would be insanely good. Yep. I, I sh that's like a hint. <laughs> 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 I 
Oh, but wait, this is this time it's for Zethold. So it's like ev evening out, right? One yep. for one. Thais had how many ones? Actually, he had three one ma one damage bombs. Did indeed. Sorry, I just caught chat out of the corner of my eye, and they are uh, because of the delay. They've just caught up to the insane pyromancer turn from Zet a lot, and they're all <laughs> spamming time to concede in chat. Before this, before the play. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Zelot found a way out. So Hero Power gonna come down on the bomb. He's gonna hope that his board can stop. And clear. oh my oh. god, another one. We have seen four one damage boom bots in a row. I guess that's balanced, right? That's sh how should it work in the first place? Yeah, sure. Um, but you know, both players are getting respectable draws off the top here. Zealot has kind of sat with uh, reactive cards in hand. Uh, we might see this Druid of the Claw get charged here for that reason. Yeah, I was going to say, he probably has a read on something like Entomb in his opponent's hand. Just because he's been playing off the top of his deck for the last three or so turns. And has been holding all these cards on the left-hand side of his hand. Which you would assume are situational removal spells. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And based on that, like he probably wouldn't didn't want to taunt the Druid of the Claw because it would just get Entombed. Of course, the Shredder gets Entombed here. But at least by charging the Druid of the Claw, he gets to deal immediately with the Holy Champion. Which would be a huge problem if he left it up. Oh, perfect draw. Yep. I really like how Zetalot didn't develop the Inertia Cleric because there's no reason reason to uh, make it weak to removal mm -hmm. as it might be crucial if you draw a Pyromancer to cycle for the draws. Yeah, and also with no... Um... Oh, that's quite sad. <laughs> with no uh, <laughs> power shield or anything in hand, like what minion is the Druid going to play that you're going to be able to get value out of a Cleric on anyway? It's like Darnus' Aspirin, Keeper of the Grove, like that's it. Um, so yeah, not much value in just putting the cleric on the board, but wow! Oh my those, god! That draw chain from Tice, Drake into sure Drake into Force of Nature. Okay, not perfect, but in terms of uh, if you take the Force of Nature out, Drake into Drake into Ancient of Law is pretty crazy. Now this light bomb will also have value because now he, he will draw two cards, remove the board. Uh, I think he's going to draw a lot more than two. I think we're going to see a certain... Oh, you, you, oh uh, no. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. But it's still two. Uh, it's four. It's four, sorry. Um, yeah. just... Alright, so now we have some options in hand. Well, I'm kind of surprised by by the fact that he didn't drop the uh, zombie chow instead of heal. Hmm. Yeah, that is interesting, actually. There has to be a reason why would he not develop Zombie Chow? Maybe he waits for the second Okanai to have it as a Mind Blast instead? It's very possible. Um, playing the Shade is of course dangerous after you've seen the Priest just draw that many cards. Holy Nova can immediately blow it out, but no such option in hand for Zerlot. He's going to go ahead and Thought mm. Steal, and that is a very weak Thought Steal. Unfortunately. Does let, does let him deal with the Ancient of Law this turn, but he would have to sacrifice his whole board to do it. Uh, no play here to draw any additional cards. Well, that's not true. He can wrath one of his own minions and then heal it. <laughs> oh, that's actually true. Yeah. On the upside, the Death Lords are safer to play right now than they were before, because there is no Savage Roar anymore. So you 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 have that in mind. You having that uh, having that in mind. You yep. know that the damage has to be dealt by swipes, grabs, and minion damage. Nothing else. Yeah, that lower feb in Tice's hand is going to be a big deal here, though, because that play that Zetalot just made, I think from Tice's perspective, you think he's digging for exactly his second light bomb in this situation. And the lower feb can come down here and just lock light bomb out of the game, make it cost 11 mana. Um, so I'm sure, I'm almost certain the lower feb will come down this turn to protect the board that we see uh, from the two minions plus the drop of the Death Lord. It's just a matter of how much he chooses to commit alongside that, because he can potentially still get hit by Holy Nova, which will be effective against the board. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good point. Seems like he's sacrificing the Shadow Next Ramus right now. And not a Pilot Shredder. It might have been a good placement. It is. <laughs> <laughs> He oh. is, is going to commit the shade as well. So Holy Nova will do a little bit of work on this board, but he feels like he has enough in play to survive the Holy Nova here. 
Uh, enough to, you know, at least force his opponent to be on it. And there's the light bomb! He gets drawn! 11 mana light bomb! Zetalad is not happy about it. Although he's smiling, that's not the smile of being <laughs> happy. No, so he's just going to play the Death Lord here, try and survive uh, for an additional turn. Takes out the Shade of Naxxramas. He's going to play the oh. Cabal for some minion value here. Wow, okay. The Zombie Child goes down because it's an emergency situation. Yep. Yeah, totally makes sense. Um, but the, I'm this still is... quite surprised why didn't he play the Zombie Chow on that turn when he healed himself, right? Because that Zombie Chow would add the possible way of clearing the Ancient of Law instead of drawing from it. Hmm. Uh, well, he would have only had four power in play, right? Um, but he would still have the Wrath. Right. The Wrath would deal three, and then you sure. sacrifice the Zombie Chow, and that's yeah. five damage, right? Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but yeah, this is a much better situation for Zetalot's Death Lords, at least. Like, and you know, they they are both being dealt with very, very quickly. But he's got to play them in the late game turns, where he has options like Entomb and Light Bomb available to him, mm -hmm. which means that he's not getting punished for the the Death Lord dropping an additional minion. It's in fact just kind of giving him more value for his eventual AOE. Yep, agree. But now it seems like the Keeper of the Grove might be just used for the silence. You deal. Essentially, you deal 8 damage. Yep. And then you can attack for 9, 12, 17 to the face. The problem is, he has no more Savage Wars. So the only burst that he'll, he will have available will be Force of Nature, Swipes, and a single Druid of the Claw. Uh, what, was it used in, the game, in this game? Yeah, we, so we definitely saw one when he charged into the Holy Champion. Uh, there was another Druid of the Claw charged at some point in this series, but I think that may have been in the first game, so I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, looks like he is going to go for the Silence um, and be aggressive here, but Tyson understands that he does have to win this game on the board now, like you said, because the Savage Roars are gone. Um, he's just going to try and be as aggressive, aggressive as possible here, and Light Bomb is going to get a ton of work done. Kind of work, but it's still a problem for for Tice because he is only running now Force of Nature in his hand, and that's six damage. Where Zedalot heals for four each single turn, so he outvalues the um, Druid's hero power four times each turn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so he's gonna go ahead and light bomb first. Ooh, the Ooh. sheep is actually not ideal for him. Ah, well, it it's kinda actually, is okay. It's, it's the same thing, actually. Yeah, you, you, so you would have taken two damage on your death lord anyway by trading into the two two, and then your, um, you know, cabal would have cleared up the other minions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's it's actually slightly better because you get to do two to face with the death lord. So actually, yeah, that that, that sheep was actually kind of good for him. And now he's at fourteen, which is not in range of combo anymore. <laughs> Uh, well, that's uh, not bad. It's it's okay, but it's going to immediately get answered. I think Tice at this point will be fairly resigned to the fact that any minion he plays, there might be an efficient answer in the priest's hand for it. Does still have a lot of resources he's looking back at, and he's probably just running out of cards in his deck. Honestly, he's he's used an Ancient of Law. He's he's had two of his minions pulled out from Death Lord. He's played both Azure Drakes. So he's probably just very, very low on resources to try and win this game with, and he's probably just going to get starved out here by the priest who's just going to uh, win this through attrition, as priests tend to do. Mm hmm I guess so. Especially with that hero power. Like, that Justica will be the MV MVP right now. Yep. Let's see what Fallsteel will fish out. What can it be to be a game changer? Because I assume you will have to use the hero power each turn, almost each turn. After you get above 20, I guess you can just skip. The heals after that, right? So Fall Steel might not be ideal this turn. She just to trade the Pyromancer first, so he's not gonna value the uh, additional okay. There is the second druid the call we were wondering about. Excellent mm -hmm. pickup here for, for Zelalot. Just goes ahead and heals his Death Lord here just to maintain the board. Now he has the taunt in play. Which is like heal for six your your hero, because exactly. you already saw one keeper. Right. And the wild growth is going to cycle here. This again is just pushing him even closer to fatigue. And there we go. He has only two cards left. I think Tyson wow. here is going to accept that that is the end of the game. Yep, there is the concede. And Zetalot ties it up. That was an interesting game. Really interesting game. Uh, Zetalot had a better start than in the first place. Uh, I mean, sorry, in the first game. Um, the Deathlots weren't a um, disadvantage this time right. for Zetalot. The usual scenario that we had yesterday 
was like play death lord lose the game because of that right yeah. because <laughs> It was kind of that was the scenario that it pulled Amalganis one time on turn four, if I remember yep. correctly. Yeah. Right? So, yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was an interesting scenario. Pretty unfortunate. Uh, so I expect that uh, Tice will stick with this deck. Priest definitely built better to counter the aggro druid than the mid range druid. You know, Pyromancer can get a ton of work done against your early minions, and your Death Lords are effective in the early game as well against that deck. So. Um, not at all surprised, looks like Tice has just re the mid-range druid here, and wild growth into shade again for Tice and Zetalot, not with a great deal to do in his hand. There is a blade master though. There's some... Now he needs the, uh, the circle or yep. the flash heal. Yep. The flash heal is a problem because you can't play it on curve because you have no coin. So, it's kind of problematic. And you probably won't go for a risk with injured blade master on turn 3. Seems unlikely, yeah. Too easy to just be immediately answered by a Wrath, but sometimes you feel forced to do this against Druid just to try and get some presence on the board. But the curve here for Tice seems pretty straightforward. Coin while growth, shade on two, shredder on three, lower theb on four. Yikes. Looks to work out pretty nicely. Sounds like a paladin. <laughs> yeah, it sounds too bad. And there is another early Death Lord. Not what he's going to want to be seeing, especially after the Shade of Naxxramas comes down here, which mm -hmm. I'm sure Zetalot is expecting after the uh, the Coin Wild Growth. There's usually only... There's, there's three possible outcomes after a good Druid player Coins Wild Growth. There's Second Wild Growth, there's Shade of Naxxramas, and there's Innovate 5 Drop. That's basically what you're going to be up against. But I guess this still, still is a Death Lord. Because you need turn four Holy Champion or turn four Injured Blade Master, basically. Right. Yeah, if you play the Blade Master now, it's vulnerable to a Wrath. It can potentially just be traded with the Shade of Nexramus if Tice does want to. Yeah, I mean it's it's fine. It's a three drop for a three drop at the end of the day, and like you know, you you you're you're inclined to be protective of your Shade because it's such a, a minion that can get value over time. But this, exactly the same thing is true of the Injured Blade Master. If you leave that on the board from a Priest, it just starts to get so much more value because of the the nature of Priest being able to heal it. So yeah, definitely agree with the Death Lord coming down here, and he'll try and hide one of his more important minions behind it on the next turn. But this is the problem with early Death Lords against Druid. They're able to be so powerful with their minions early on, and now he's going to pass this turn, and then as of next turn, this board will immediately answer that Death Lord. Mm -hmm. But uh, this time there's a Light Bomb already in hand. This might be very useful, but I guess uh, what I have to be uh, doing right now as a Priest is cycling through the deck. Because if you run out, out of answers to the minions, you will be dead either way. So you can't really commit to the board without having card advantage. And right. that's that's a actually that's a huge problem because most of the decks would like to do that, but that requires quite a combo piece. Sure does. Uh, the choice of minion there for, for Zerlot was pretty interesting because looking at this board, he's almost certainly going to Holy Nova next turn. He'd love Second Shade to come out here. Okay, Keeper's not great. That's um, the worst outcome. Yep. Um, like, yeah, looking at Zerlot's hand with his intention to Holy Nova this hand, he would have been begging for the second shade of Naxxramas to come out, right? Because that would have been just the dream scenario for him. Uh, unfortunately, if that did happen, it probably would have got locked out by the lower third, which is going to happen here anyway. Um, so he would have been happy for a few seconds when he saw the shade come down and then uh, immediately regret it when the lower third came out. Um, but Tice may be considering taking out that Blade Master here with some of his removal options, but... I'd personally be surprised if we don't see the, the lower third come down here. Yeah, I agree. It has to be put down, and uh, the only problem is that if you played on turn 5 instead of turn 6, then you are not playing around Light Bomb. That's the only yes. reason why Tides was thinking about not dropping the uh, low tab right now. Because it's so important to have the answer, but at the same time, if he, if he draws a Savage Roar, this is again so much damage, and I'm sure that Tides will just play the Savage Roar immediately if he if he gets one. Yeah, that's an excellent point. Uh, so he's going to have to decide what he wants to trade with here with his Blade Master. Shade of Next Ramus definitely looks like the most uh, threatening target. Just heals up his Blade Master, protects it from the 2-4 on the board, and just plays out a Pyromancer. Pretty miserable turn here from, from yeah. uh, Zetalot, to be honest. Yeah, that means I have to wait one turn. Ooh. Well... This Living Roots now deals 3 damage, but I don't think that Tice would like to commit before turn 6 with the Dasher Drake. 
although it replaces it himself, but the minions that he had, he has in his hand, are so low value, and he would like probably to keep the um, keep uh, the big game hunter before uh, Doctor Boom again. Yeah. So the swipe comes down here, he's just going to clean up and he's just saying to, to Zetalot here, okay, if, if you want to light bomb, you have to light bomb this board, I'm not going to give you anything else. He even lights up the health totals perfectly to encourage the light bomb. And it's really only going to take out two minions, the Shredder is going to respawn another two drop and he's able to, to follow that up nicely on the following turn with an Azure Drake. So uh, I think Tice will be fairly comfortable getting light bombed here, but it looks like Zetalot was considering the Holy Nova instead of the light bomb. Well, it decreases the amount of damage by six adds on top of that three. So, oh, it wouldn't be perfect. Yeah, I think uh, doing it the other way around is a, is a little bit more reasonable. You, you potentially don't answer your opponent's next minion with the Holy Nova, but there's a good chance that the Holy Nova kills the Shredder drop if you want to go that way. Um, but yeah, Zealot is kind of stuck in this situation. The priest gets stuck in a little, a little bit too often for my liking, which is they have to, <laughs> they have to spend yeah. their turns answering the board, but their answers aren't perfect, so they end up, you know, only being able to answer half the board their opponent plays on each turn. You just progressively get further and further behind. Uh, so he's going to try and make an aggressive play here. Plays a five-five and a four-seven in the same turn for seven mana, which is not bad going. But but this is the last turn when he can do that. Yeah. Because it's the last turn before Savage Roar, uh, Force of Nature combo. And if you want to develop the board by being um, passive, this is the turn. This is the last chance of doing that. Yeah, so it looks like uh, another board control Force of Nature play here. No, he's just going to oh, go aggressive to face. Yeah, with, with Living Roots, Druid of the Claw charge in hand. Wait, there's actually oh, it's because it's free day. Yeah, wow. yeah, we're done. Yeah, we're, we're, done. we're just so... so um, Concentrated on the fact that there's, uh, that that there, there was the, the no combo still in hand, that we didn't actually count the damage. Look at that. Yeah, like I said, it's, cast... uh, it's early. <laughs> it's early. Sap casters, etc. Um, as I said yesterday, it's in the casters union that you get to miss one lethal every day. So we've now both used up our one for the day, Lothar. We have to be perfect now. Okay. For another, for another six series. So we have to wake up. This is the first day, uh, first game of the day. We are starting off. Um, I would say by, by the show match, right? Because Zeta and Tice, I would, I would say that that would be my to go to go match today. To see, to, 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 that would be the most interesting, apart from of course the grand final. But from the quarterfinals, this probably would be the most interesting because yeah. it's a priest, and <laughs> you know, that's quite unusual. Yeah, I mean, Zelot definitely set a high standard for himself in the first series in terms of exciting games. It was just crazy stuff. Him overcoming the bad matchup against Control Warlock just by consistently being able to burst down with the, the Orc and I flash heal combinations. Um, again, he's, he's in a... I'd say this isn't as bad a matchup as um, Priest against Warlock, but Priest against Druid is, is again, kind of easy just to get snowballed out of control by the Druid. Unless you get what we saw in game two from Zetalot, which is a lot of uh, injured Blade Master pressure early on. Mm -hmm. hmm. But that's a really bad hand for Zetalot. Like the, the Zombie Chow helps a lot by just making the uh, the board awkward for ties with the Living Roots. But it will not help when there will be first big minion on board, and that's a downhill way for Zedalot from that point on. Because there's nothing nothing that he can put on board on turn 3. Unless he top decks a Injured Blade Master, it's looking yep. very grim. It is. And uh, Tice here is just considering his innovate options. He'll be thinking about um, what he does against a Death Lord next turn or an Injured Blade Master next turn uh, with, with a Circle of Healing. So he's just going to consider here whether he wants to innovate out the Shredder. It will leave him with nothing to do for the next turn, but he has options like Living Roots. Uh, he has options like um, Coin Swipe on the next turn. But it looks like he's going to go all the way through to the Azure Drake here. And that allows him to use his turn three as a Living Roots for three damage plus a hero power to potentially mm -hmm. take out that zombie chow. What do you think about that? That's an interesting line. I'm quite um, surprised by that. Yeah, I'm... 
I personally think I would have just gone for the uh, the Innovate Shredder because then if a Death Lord comes down, you just have Coin Swipe as your play to immediately kill the the Death Lord. Mm -hmm. Um, seem to give you the most flexible options. You could have just done Living Roots Hero Power on the Zombie Chow if it's just another pass turn from the Priest. Seem to be the most flexible option to me with the most options uh, to deal with what you'd expect from the Priest. Um, but Tice obviously has something else in mind here, and it's going to work out pretty well with the the three damage Living Roots on the Zombie Chow. Still works. It's exactly the same scenario he was in the turn before, but this time his Azure Drake is basically a big game hunter. Yeah. Stat stat wise. Yeah. That's about it. But the priest didn't develop the board, and that's a huge thing. It is, yeah. And now if the Death Lord comes down, it will get punished. Ah, well that that helps. Whoa. Okay. Oh, oh. Okay. Whoa. I mean, it kills the Azure Drake, and if it doesn't die. Yep. Then you're in a spot where you can play Injured Blade Master and heal both, but it is greedy. It is very, very greedy. Um, so if you play Injured Blade Master and just circle it now, do you lose that minion to swipe or Wrath? Mm -hmm. uh, but the same thing is true of the Death Lord. You know, Wrath does four damage, so you'll you'll lose the Death Lord to the Wrath all the same. Um, it seems a, a lot more dangerous in this situation. To uh, to immediately lose your Death Lord than your injured Blade Master, so I think I, I would have just gone for the maximum tempo play here, but um, I'm I'm very uh, reticent to criticize Zetalot's priest plays. I'm pretty sure he knows what he's doing with priest more than anyone. I agree, but I think why is he keeping the circle feeling is because of the fact that first of all he's playing Alkanized Old Priest, yeah, and it will help a lot with a potential four damage clear uh, against the Druid, and also is. Very important fact is that he's running low on cards, and seems like the circle of healing might be the only only way of drawing cards if he draws the uh, can I, sorry uh, the the priestess but the cleric. But it works out. The greedy play worked out perfectly. Yep, sure does. That's crazy. Uh, Tice chooses not to go for the removal play. Just develops a shredder and just immediately gets punished by that circle of healing. Worst case scenario here for Tice. Not only was the circle of healing there to heal up the the Death Lord, but also the Blade Master to come down alongside it. And now he's going to have to swipe off curve, hope that something good comes out of the Death Lord here. And that's the second keeper of the Grove that he's and got off Death Lord. And it's on turn six. Yep. So the worst scenario here would be. Cabal Shadow Priest taking the 2-4. Yeah. I think that was a huge tempo loss for, for Tice not to use the swipe when he had still the Azure Drake on board. Yeah, I agree. And you definitely saw Tice wincing there in his player cam, just hoping that the Cabal Shadow Priest didn't come out. He's managed to dodge that one, so I think uh, he'll be he'll be very grateful after the previous turn where the, the Angel Blade Master and the Circle was in hand for the ultimate punish. Mm -hmm. He'll be very, very pleased that uh, he, he managed to at least dodge the Cabal Shadow Priest there. But this Thought Steal from Zetalot has uh, worked out a lot better than most of his previous ones. He's picked up two high-quality minions to be able to be proactive with in the next few turns. Mm -hmm. And it looks but like he's going to have the ball position to do that as well. This turn, I guess, the best play is to sacrifice the Pelter Shredder first to get a potential um, spell power from it and kill it with the four damage grab. Mm. The Rubian Egg. He's going to go ahead and uh, Savage Raw here just to try and immediate, like, get a guaranteed kill on the Death Lord. Druid of the Claw comes out as a 4-4. Mm. That isn't great either. Yep. And usually, Nerubian Egg is, uh, is a minion you're happy to have as protection against AoE, but it doesn't work against Light Bomb. It just sits there, takes zero damage, the rest of your board gets nuked, and you're generally sad about your life. And so it looks like he's going to wrap away his egg to get a 4-4 here. He saw a little shrug there from Tice, like, oh, I guess. I guess I'll take a 4-4. It's not terrible. Basically, when you think about it, it's most likely 2 mana, add a plus 3, plus 3 on a 1-1, one, one, two, 2 drop from the Palta Shredder, yep. or something along, among those lines, if you want to compare it. But um, it's definitely not a perfect scenario. Well, this set up a lot of options for Zerod in the future. Because a 5 mana Light Bomb is a huge difference because of the low tap. He's, he's now is able to clear up the the board after a lot of his, is played. And that's something really important. Yeah, and Tice had no really real viable options to be able to remove the Emperor that turn. He could have Force of Nature it if he'd have decided to, but it seems like an incredibly weak play. So he's just going to go ahead and drop the Doctor Boom for tempo here and just rely on the fact that, you know, most of the time Emperor isn't going to be devastating in a Priest deck, but... 
we see that uh, Zealot's hand is uh, pretty extraordinary here. He has zero mana Nausea Cleric. You know, any card that gets reduced to zero just gets exponentially more powerful. Um, and then on top of that, both both of the, the low tempo removal spells, the Entomb and the Light Bomb, both just progressively getting cheaper and cheaper is going to work out really, really well for Zealot here. Yep. Now let's see what he will draw first, because that's the important thing. Will it change his plans? Ooh. Most likely. He can still draw draw one card, but I think keeping it for the potential Alcani Soul Priest might be even more important. I was going to say, he might decide to try and kill a Boombot here and then use the Flash Heal to possibly gain more health. Lucky that the although the Cleric got hit, it didn't die there, so he is going to go ahead and use the Flash Heal for another mm -hmm. card. And then that was risky, mana. but I like it. It was risky, yeah, but if he'd have like taken damage on the Blade Master, for example, from the Boombot, he could have got a lot more value out of the Flash Heal. Even so, on the yeah. on the Emperor. Right, yeah. So the outcome was just quite unlucky. There was like a 50% chance to land it on a minion that he wanted to. Yep. Uh, to land it on. Turn 8, where the Azure Drake has no value without a swipe in the hand. Or pro probably I would keep it for turn 9, and I would just drop the engine of, uh, of Lord this turn. Oh my god! <laughs> That's how it works, right? Yeah, pretty much. Zealot has a little moment. Winces says, all right, you know, boom bots have happened, but I'm still in a pretty nice position here with this 4-7 uh, Ninja Blade Master on the board, so won't be too sad. That's true, but at the same time now, when Thais got rid of the Emperor, I don't blame him for playing the Azure Drake just to kill off the only draw mechanic that was on board. So, hmm. Well, this is quite bad. <laughs> the fourth steal wasn't that impressive. It wasn't, but you know, Shade Maxramus isn't the end of the world. It's a, another relatively proactive minion that he can play that Druid is going to struggle to interact with. None of their cards are going to deal with it particularly well. It looks like he's going to sacrifice his last burst healing card just to pull the Blade Master up on the board here. So he's content to, to play with his health here at 26 with a commanding board presence, even against the, the explosive burst of a Druid, which makes a, a lot of sense to me. Hmm. I think. I think keeping the Emperor for the next turn would be better now because now you want to cycle through the deck to get a Savage Roar and get a discount on both Force of Nature's and a potential Savage Roar, maybe even two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. Um, then at that point, if you discount both of these Force of Nature's and a potential Savage Roar that you draw, you can then draw a Innovate, um, which allows for the Force of Nature, Force of Nature, Savage Roar combo in one turn, which is uh, roughly a million damage. Yeah, that's about right. Hmm. Well, that's a bad draw. Still a chance to draw the Savage Roar from the top deck next turn. Ah, Circle of Healing is a brick, but he does have the Entomb here. But it turns out that the uh, additional value from the Emperor, just discounting the Entomb, hasn't made any difference. Because that was a, essentially an 8 mana Entomb anyway, because all he's doing with the rest of his turn is, is healing his face. So. No does have a draw, unfortunately. So it's 7, 8, and 12 damage next turn. You saw both flash heals being already used, so you're most likely not dead next turn. But you can't really afford to uh, play another Ancient of Law in this situation. No, not unless you want to use it to heal. Uh, I think the, the double 5 drop play is just uh, a lot more valid. Stops the second Entomb coming down on that Druid of the Claw. Uh, but the Orcanized Soul Priest might be able to get some work done here. The Orcanized Circle is uh, a little bit expensive. Can't use the Hero Power with it as well, and he will use his Shade in the process. Um, well, he will use the Shade to trade with the Adrex yes. of the Claw, right? Yeah, but then exactly. you would have to use another minion to clear the Lotep, and that seems quite an overinvestment. Yeah, it does. I think he's uh, still pretty comfortable on this board. We'll probably just see some combination of uh, Keeper of the Grove, Snipe, uh, Orcanized Circle. Uh, sorry, Orcanized Soul Priest, just plus the Hero Power. Uh, those those cards should be enough just to keep him cemented on the board. Uh, he may even choose to go for the Silence here and just be aggressive. Now he's going to deal the damage, choose to clear the minion, use the Blade Master because it has the most health. It looks like he's just going to push face. Question is whether he commits the Orcanai here. He chooses not to. So 
playing the Orkanai on the board there would have indicated that he sees himself completely as the aggressor in this situation, mm -hmm. uh, whereas holding it in his hand seems to indicate that he's he's still thinking about the potential of having to use uh, an Orkanai circle of healing at some point in this match. Well, I guess you don't really really need to develop anything on the board where you ha where you have already such a wide presence, right? It's four minions. Even though Keeper is a two four minion, it has a lot of potential value with Valens chosen. I'm not sure if he, if he even plays one. Might not be might not be the case. Mm -hmm. uh, but for Ties, it is scary to have any minion uh, on the board from from Priest now on. Yep. So Force of Nature plus Swipe is going to clear out most of this board. And it's it's kind of hard to say, right? Because it looks interesting that um, he's mm -hmm. oh well, never mind. There's a Doctor Boom. It kind of looks interesting that he's retained that Orkanized Soul Priest in his hand right now, because it feels like now from this situation he may have had to use the Orkanized Circle. But if he'd have just played the Orkanized onto the board that turn, it would have been much more difficult for for Zerlot, sorry, for Tice to remove the board in the first place. So. Now he's dead to Orkanized Hero Power. But yes. he has to take that into account because he knows that the three cards that are still left in the in the hand of Zetalot uh, are hoarded for like five turns, I think. So he has to be aware that those are situational cards, and most likely those those will be Holy Novas, those will be uh, Alkanite Soul Priest, Light Bombs, Shadow Ward Deaths. Wow, well that worked. Sure did, yeah. I guess, uh, again, the Tice is the Druid player, pretty low on cards in his deck, so the, the Ancient of Law was was likely to pick up value there. Mm -hmm. uh, are we going to see the... Are oh, we going to see the Light Bomb play here, I believe, and then heal to pick up some cards? Yeah, at least one card. Well, it's one or equal, right? Nope. <laughs> Uh, well, Pyromancer comes down. That he's works. Gonna yeah. Play it out on the board for pressure, and again, he's just threatening lethal. We've seen both laws being used, so there's no healing potential for the druid here. Hmm. Is Tice forced to use another force of nature? He might be. Um... Well, the other option is to use living roots and just develop, right. um, and just develop a Emperor and Shade of Nexramas. Yeah, so Justicar hasn't been played, so he he reasonably expects he's seen both flash heals already, so he probably feels like the maximum damage he's taking from an empty board is two. So it looks like yeah, he feels safe enough here, dropping the living roots and just going for the pressure play here with the uh, the Emperor and Shade, as you said, Lothar. I like the Emperor because of the fact that it discount both both of the wild groves. Yeah, and if you use that, then you're still available. Um, to use the mana, sorry, you have the option to use the mana for the combo next turn. What mana off lethal? Or can I, Ancient of Law, your opponent's My face? My god. <laughs> <laughs> if only he'd have got his Emperor tick on the Or can I Soul Priest from his yeah, stolen that Emperor. Would be insane. <laughs> this would have been the coolest lethal. Oh. Well, I guess you draw cards. I guess so, yeah. Holy Nova's good. That is additional damage. We are getting very, very close. But again, he can't Holy Nova and Orkanai Hero Power in the same turn just yet. But as soon as he draws just a car, he's going to be threatening the amount of damage that he needs to do. So the card but draw plan definitely seems reasonable. The problem is that now we see the usual, um, usual issue with Priest, right? He's so close. He's so goddamn close to, to finish up the game, but he's not able to because the deck is not oppressive enough. Yeah, it's so um, retroactive, right? And so to and then uh, just relies on answers that it doesn't pressure enough. Right. Uh, so it looks like Tice is going to go ahead. Ooh. I don't think that's lethal. That's sure. uh, twenty six. Twenty six. Yeah. So I'm sure Zerlot calculated this on the previous turn before. You know, he could have chosen to go with the Orkanized Circle to to clear the board. I'm sure he calculated that he wasn't dead to combo and chose to take the aggressive line to try and dig to his Justicar to get that burst damage that he needed. 
Tice is going to cycle his second wild growth. Wrath to cycle again or Wrath to clear? No, no, no. Wrath he has clear, clear the and yeah. he needs the hero power this turn. Because he's aware that the Jastikar and Alcani will be an option at some point of the game. So he needs to get out of rent of one hero power. And this time, since he has the Keeper in play, he's going to choose to eliminate that uh, Nausea Cleric so that no cards can be drawn. Well, that helps, kinda. Does, yeah. Um, I think Orcanai's circle is still just a better option, though. You give up your Orcanai for the just a car burst, though, that's the problem. Yep. How do you win from that point? You need yeah. to play the Cabal Shadow Priest as a Yeti for six mana. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think actually Light Bomb does end up being better. Light Bomb, heal your own face. Leaves the 2-2 on board, but leaving that there isn't a big deal because it's kind of the last minion in the deck that lets you get value from Cabal Shadow Priest. Mm -hmm. And again, the the Priest is... Sorry, the Druid Tice is just running out of stuff to do. Two cards left in deck again. Well, there's one card left right now, right? Yeah, two cards, including the one that he just drew. So, so what is the last card? One more. Uh... He, oh, he used all the big bombs, right? There was, um, there was Dr. Boom. Two that laws, two, uh, two laws, two shades, two shredders. Uh, might be a second keeper. No, second keeper came off Death Lord. Uh, I don't know. Is my answer? I don't know. But is Zetal pushed now to use the Alkenai Circle? Uh, no, Holy Nova is good enough, right? Especially with that Holy Champion draw, it just puts oh, yeah, an right. aggressive minion on the board. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Holy Nova is plenty here. He knows he's seen one Savage Raw being used, so... Oh, it's an Innovate! Of course it is. The bomb. Yep. That's about it. That's probably the game. Yeah, I don't see any way out. He's going to have to uh, use his combo to clear here and just hope this Shredder does all the damage that he needs for the rest of the game. <laughs> Doesn't seem like it's going to work out too well. <laughs> Out fatigued, I would say. Yep. You don't see that often. When you think about the matchup. Druids being fatigued, yeah, it's not not the most common thing in the world. Even like really heavily teched fatigue decks, like you know, fatigue warriors and stuff like that, they have, they struggle to actually fatigue a druid because of the total amount of burst they can output. What do you think about using Circle of Healing right now to get the couple of Shadow Priests and possible steel? <laughs> Ah, uh, the worst idea. Oh, he's, just gonna, work. he's just gonna circle to clear this last minion though, play out his other Orc Knight on board, and this is this is pretty much game. I mean any play he made that dealt with the board that turn was gonna be game, so Tice accepts it. Wow! Tice left with a single innovate and a hero power and a dream. So a dream that was quickly evaporating though. That was an interesting game. Tice oh, was, yeah. 29 cards from his deck and yep. still didn't win against the Priest. So now it's two versus two between those two players deciding match. And I'm sure Tice will be staying with the mid range Druid because it has uh, better chances than his aggro build with the Fell Reaver that can be easily answered by a Shadow Ward death. Mm -hmm. Yeah, additional things in the deck as well, like uh, Lepanome and all those things. More Holy Nova targets, more targets for you know, Pyromancer, Power Word, Shield. Um, this mid-range Druid, definitely a more effective deck for the matchup. So we talked a little bit at the, the start of the broadcast. You know, we, we kind of called players out a bit for like not being prepared, not, not being able to switch their decks enough to react to the situation. But in this case, Tice is just picking his best deck. There's nothing wrong with his strategy here. Mm -hmm. It's just that Zetalot's just overall mastery of Priest is uh, allowing him to compete in what should be a, a slightly unfavorable matchup. Oh, this looks kind of sad for, for Tice. He'll be pushed to use a 5-drop next turn, otherwise his, um, well, to be honest, his curve is looking over either way. If he uses the Innervate, he can try to curve out with Azure Drake, because that can draw him a 4-drop or a swipe. But yeah. then he's not able to, if he doesn't do that, then he is not able to use the Innervate on turn 4, because he would have to Innervate a 5-drop on turn 4. Mm -hmm. So that kind of makes no sense. So probably the better option is to use the Azure Drake Descent to try to be on curve with the two draws uh, in the upcoming upcoming turns. Yeah, the Drake is really scary here. I think he might end up going low, though. 
Yeah, the, okay. the Drake the Drake is just really scary to put on this board. You know your opponent has coin, so mm -hmm. at the very best, it's just going to get coin traded. At worst, you know, power chill things can happen. And that Pyromancer being drawn by Zetalot on turn two definitely went a long way to dissuade the Drake from Tice. So I definitely like the lower third player here over the Azure Drake. Okay, yeah, all right. Now it's being traded two for one, which is not bad, but in the long run, probably not going to work out for Tice. Yeah, that's the case because he lost actually exactly it's two for two because uh, the investment of innovate has right. to be counted too. Now the uh, pyromancer is off the board. He feels a little bit more comfortable playing that shade though, and we do see the powered shield was Ooh. drawn, so it would have been punished really hard if that pyromancer was left on the board. But look at that whole champion. This will be a force to be reckoned with. It will. It will for sure. If a uh, circle of healing is is drawn at any point in the near future, we could uh, see some work getting done. But without well, the pyromancer, it's a little bit less effective. This big game hunter might be quite useful. Yes, it can kill the whole champion. Uh, if you will get the bonus twice. Yeah, I imagine the holy champion will just be used to straight up trade for the Azure Drake this turn, though. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess so. Okay, so he's gonna make a card draw play here. He could have chosen just to heal his own face and traded the Drake, but the Blade Master means he's gonna go all in here on the big board, heal up his his Blade Master straight back up to a four seven, draw the card, trade the Holy Champion, and again the Priest is just very very heavily out tempoing the Druid here. He invested a lot of, a lot in his board, but it works perfectly against Druid because Druid has problems with high HP minions, and what is on the other side of the board, high HP minions. Even the one drop has three HP. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that holy champion being buffed to five damage means that the the emperor is going to be immediately answered, um, and that big game hunter is going to be left looking for a target because I imagine he will use the uh, the holy champion to get traded off here if the emperor comes down. You think so? I, like, I, th I think you have to respect the big game hunter. I can understand the greed. Maybe if we draw like a circle of healing, he might be convinced to do otherwise, but um, I wouldn't be surprised to see it get traded off here. I think he'll be why, happy enough with his board. Why not attack with the injured blade master, sacrifice the, um, the, uh, the cleric to deal the five damage and heal it anyway? Um, I don't know, I think I just value having the, the Cleric on the board at this point. Oh, that Flash Heal might be enough to convince me otherwise, though. Um, but yeah, like if you look at his hand, he doesn't really have much to do for the next few turns, so I kind of like just still having the Cleric in play. Um, it looks like he's going to agree with you, Lothar. He's going to go for the aggressive play and try and end the game as quickly as possible. Cleric is going to be traded off. 11 damage, push to face. I like it. It's very aggressive, very oppressive uh, against Ties. Yeah, the problem I have with making these types of plays with Priest is that if you if you kind of abandon the value plan even for a couple of turns and try and be aggressive, if that gets shut down, we get into the situation that we saw in the last game, right, that you commented mm -hmm, on mm -hmm. where, you know, sure, you've done 25 damage in the early game. Well done, have a medal. But how are you, <laughs> how, how you going to do the last five, right? Have a banana. Yeah. <laughs> uh well, this seems like a turn when you have to over-invest, and this means Druid does a Claw Charge and Savage Roar. Uh, what am I talking about? Uh, Big Game Hunter? Big Game Hunter. And a third! A third Keeper of the Grove! My god. Oh, it's insane. Well, is it so bad? Because this, this is actually the minion that survives the Light Bomb. Right, but... I mean, it's still an easy trade after the Light Bomb regardless, so... Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. I don't know how effective that is. Um, I guess. Oh! 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 <laughs> oh my God! Well, I guess you do that, right? Instead, you use the Capital Shadow Priest. You get the Keeper of the Grove. Then you kill the Shade of Nexramas and kill. No, you can't. You you can't invest so much health, so much damage in health of your minions. Because if you do that, then your opponent has a way of making a comeback. I guess this is the turn when you make. <sighs> So, if you light bomb, you how have... can I soul priest and damage the four two? Uh, I mean, the cabal looks right. So, if he, if he'd have a light bomb, he'd have had two four threes left on the board. One of them would have had to trade, so he would have had a four three and a four one. In this situation, he has a, a lot more health spread out, but there is a four two left on board. Um, so, I think this is better than the light bomb play for sure. 
Um, but again, it does open up sort of counterplay with with swipe and wrath and things like that. So mm -hmm. this, this is the turn where Zealot is going to be crossing his fingers, hoping that Druid doesn't have those few removal spells that they do have access to. And he's going to very quickly get the good news that he's got away with it here and he is going to get to keep this huge board for the next turn. Wow, he's going for the Dr. Boom. I mean, it sounds like the best idea, right? But uh, it will be immediately answered by the Entomb, which will put another thread, thread in the board um, of Zethalots, but it doesn't really matter even now, because the, the board is enough to pressure uh, Tice. Right. Um, looks like, based on the play we're making Light here, it, no, because he just healed it up to a 4-4. There's no reason to do that if you're going to Light Bomb. He's just protecting it from the Boom Bot, and now he's going to Entomb. Push the extra damage to face with the Cabal, I'm sure. I don't really see this Cabal going into a 1-1. I don't, I don't yeah. think so. Yeah. Well, this looks bleak for Tice. It does. Is that a lot? Bringing, you know, showing the merit here of just bringing your uh, your signature class, the class that you know inside out. I mean, I don't want to put the writing on the wall too early here, but he's looking to be in a pretty comfortable position in this matchup. Definitely has a lot of pressure, and he has a ton of answers with those two light bombs for the, the shape of the minions that are in Tice's hand right now. Two laws and a drake. But the only chance for Tice is now dr drawing to the top of the deck a swipe or a wrap. That's the only out I see. Yep, and that's what he goes for. Oh. Second Savage Roar isn't going to get the job done. Well, now you have to go for the Savage Roar and so. get the kill on the Injured Blade Master. Yeah. So you can use the two managed Savage Raw and the Hero Power. Let that lets you take down the two three cleanly. Oh, that Boom Bot is not gonna get the job done though. It's looking bleak. Zetalot does have the two extra damage from the Soul Priest in hand. And, and that's Priest it. He's gonna concede. Zetalot advances to the semi-finals with his Priest. Well, that was quite intense. Well, if you talk w uh, with more with the majority of the players. Uh, they think that Druid is, is has an advantage of a uh, of a priest, right? Because of the amount of minions that have four four attack, uh, they can usually trade with the Death Lords easily, mm -hmm. and the drops from the Death Lords are so oppressive against the priest. But in this case, we have seen the same matchup five times, yeah, and Zedot pulled three wins. Yep. So it's not like you know. You can talk about some variants when you see five games, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not a huge I, sample size. So. It's not a huge sample size, of course. Yeah. But at the same time, it's the biggest sample size we have ever seen in a competitive tournament when it comes to Hearthstone, right? When it comes sure. to one matchup in one game. Yep. So um, it looked convincing, I would say. He had good opening hands in three games, and he won actually. Right. Um, and also, you can't. You know, there's an element that you can say. You know, uh, top players. Um, ideas on matchups are always biased by the fact that they're a top player, right? So if, mm -hmm, if, mm -hmm. if they play on ladder, their win rate is naturally going to be higher than average because on average they're playing a weaker player than them. But this is Zetalot, perhaps the best Priest player in the world, against Tice, possibly the best Druid player in the world. Um, yep. So we, it's a really, really good representation of, of how the matchup goes. And we saw a lot of things there like Priest just getting ahead on the board early through like blade master circles and holy champion and stuff like that um definitely this is a, a version of control priest that Zetalot has teched out for these kind of matchups just the addition of things like holy champion and dr boom we saw a couple of times yeah, dr boom is not a particularly common card in control priest these days that's true um, and yeah just having those extra minion uh, minion presence cards in the deck has just allowed him to compete with druid quite nicely yeah that's true and um Congrats to Zetal. Tice, unfortunately, will not be able to win two tournaments in a row. Uh, but I guess he should be happy anyway, right? Because he had that bit, that win on his uh, uh, on his resume. resume. So uh, now he has to be okay with the loss. And we'll switch to a break for five minutes to get the next players ready. And the next players are Ecop versus Crane. So that will be a Warlock versus a Warrior. 
And that should be also interesting because it's most likely... I don't think that Crane will use the Patron Warrior, but we'll talk about that uh, after the break. So don't go anyway, uh, anywhere, guys. This is the G2 Esports Class Legends.